The surface of Karen was a living contradiction. It was dead. Everything here was. Yet it was alive in the way that a black hole consumes, methodical, relentless, patient. It had no rush because it had eternity to devour. Ryland Kane stood on that surface, and he felt its hunger beneath his boots. He didn't move, not because he didn't want to, but because he was listening. Karin was more than a planet, it was an entity, and it communicated in ways far older than language. Every shift of the ground, every breath of the wind, whispered a warning. Not that it cared if you heeded it, it simply waited. The storm on the horizon was closer now, spreading across the sky like ink spilled into water. Thick clouds choked the light from the distant stars, and the air hummed with static. But that wasn't what held Ryland's attention. No, it was the hum from beneath his feet. Low, insistent, like the rumble of a beast that had only just noticed him. Karin was awake now, and it was assessing him, like a predator studying prey. This wasn't a game, though. This wasn't a planet with tricks or tests. This was a world that had learned, over millennia, how to strip away everything that made you human and leave you with only one thing, survival. This wasn't just a test of physical strength or strategy. This was an initiation into something darker, something primal, something Ryland wasn't sure he'd even understood yet, and that scared him. Not the planet, fear of death was long gone from his mind, but the question of what Karin would strip away from him by the end. They had warned him before the drop. His commanders, even Torik, the alien who had fought beside humans in a hundred battles. Torik had hesitated something Rylan had never seen in the alien before. Karin changes you, Torik had said, his eyes narrowing as he studied Rylan. It's not a place, it's a process. Rylan had shrugged off the warning. He knew what he was here for. They all did. The Terran forces didn't need soldiers. They needed something more. Something that could endure beyond endurance. Something that could face the galaxy's darkest threats without flinching. And to become that, you had to survive Karin. You had to face it, let it break you, and then rebuild yourself from what remained. The storm had started to whisper now, the wind twisting and circling around Rylan like it was trying to understand him. He kept moving, his steps slow but deliberate, his hand never far from the knife at his waist. The knife wouldn't help against the storm or the creatures lurking beneath the surface. But it was a reminder, a symbol that, no matter what Karen threw at him, he was still human. For now. The first hour passed without incident. The land stretched out endlessly before him, jagged rocks and broken ground that seemed to shift and pulse with each step. Ryland's mind, trained to observe patterns, picked up on something unsettling. Karen's landscape didn't follow the natural laws of geography. The rocks weren't just jagged, they were designed, placed in formations that hinted at intention. This wasn't erosion or tectonic movement. This was architecture, or worse, an intelligence. Another rumble beneath his feet. This one stronger. He paused, crouching down to press his hand against the ground. The hum was back, but this time it wasn't alone. There was a rhythm to it, a pulse, faint but undeniable. Karin was waking up. No, that wasn't right. Karin was preparing to act. Rylan stood, scanning the horizon. In the distance, something shifted. A ripple, barely visible, but there, the land was moving, rearranging itself. He didn't move. Instead, he waited, his mind processing what was happening. The ground wasn't just moving, it was reforming, reshaping itself into something else.
Ryland's hand tightened around his knife, though he knew it was useless. This wasn't an enemy he could fight. It wasn't even something he could understand. But that was the point. The figure stood still, watching him, if watching was even the right word. It had no eyes, no face, just an overwhelming presence that bore down on him like gravity. Ryland didn't blink. He knew that any sign of weakness would be his undoing. The knife in his hand wasn't a weapon. It was a declaration, I am still here. I am still human. The monolith didn't move. It didn't have to. It was Karin, and Karin didn't need to rush. Rylan exhaled slowly. The test wasn't over. It had only just begun. The storm was closer now, the wind picking up, carrying with it a strange, electric charge. Rylan could feel it in the air, in his bones. The storm wasn't natural. Nothing here was. The clouds above twisted and writhed like they were alive, and the ground beneath his feet trembled with anticipation. He glanced up at the sky. The clouds had turned a deep, unnatural purple, and the wind howled now, a sound that was almost human in its intensity. The storm was nearly upon him, and there was nowhere to run. But running wasn't the point. Rylan crouched, pressing his hand to the ground once more. The hum was gone now, replaced by something else. A silence. A stillness that spoke of anticipation. Karin was watching. He stood, knife in hand, and faced the storm head-on. He could feel the electricity in the air, the hair on his arms standing on end. The storm was alive, and it was angry. The wind picked up swirling around him in a vortex of dust and debris. Rylan braced himself, his feet planted firmly on the ground. The storm was trying to tear him apart, piece by piece, but he wouldn't give it the satisfaction. He took a step forward, then another. The wind pushed against him, the lightning striking all around him. But Rylan didn't stop. He kept moving, his mind focused on one thing, survival. The storm's fury reached its peak, the wind howling, the lightning striking in rapid succession. But Ryland kept moving, one foot in front of the other. The storm couldn't break him, it couldn't even slow him down. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the storm ceased. The wind died down, the lightning stopped, and the clouds above began to dissipate. Karin had tested him, and he had passed. But Ryland knew this was only the beginning. The planet wasn't done with him yet. The real test was still to come. Because Chiron wasn't just a planet, it was a predator, and it had chosen him as its prey.
Karin wasn't done. He continued forward, every step feeling more deliberate than the last. The path ahead wasn't clear, but it never was on Karin. There were no landmarks, no clear goals, just the unspoken rule, keep moving or die. The sky above darkened slowly, as though the planet was savoring the transition from day to night. It was in these moments that Ryland's thoughts drifted back to the others, those who had come before him. Some were dead. Others were different, broken by the planet, transformed into something less than human. He'd seen the aftermath of failed initiations. Men with haunted eyes, scarred bodies, but worse than that, scarred minds. Karin didn't just break your bones. It reached into your soul and twisted it. He'd seen what that looked like, the aftermath of it, in the eyes of Torek when the alien had spoken those final words before the drop. Karin doesn't kill you, Torek had said. It remakes you. Rylan hadn't fully understood what that meant until now. The storm was gone, but the planet was still watching, still probing, still learning him. Karin wasn't just a place. It was something else entirely, alive, thinking, adapting. He pushed forward, his muscles aching from the strain, his mind sharp despite the exhaustion. He couldn't afford to rest, not now. The night was coming, and with it, the real danger. The landscape began to shift subtly beneath his feet, the ground feeling softer, more yielding. He knelt, pressing his hand to the surface, and felt it, a low, rhythmic pulse, like the heartbeat of the world beneath him. Something stirred. Not far ahead, the ground began to shift again, the rocks cracking and splintering as the earth itself trembled. Rylan rose to his feet, his hand instinctively gripping the knife at his side. He knew it wouldn't be enough, but it was all he had. He wasn't alone anymore. It wasn't a living thing in the way Rylan understood life. It was a construct, a creature born from the planet itself, made of stone and metal, with eyes that glowed faintly in the growing darkness. It had no mouth, no face, just an overwhelming sense of presence, a silent predator, ancient and patient. Rylan's heart pounded in his chest, but he didn't move. He couldn't. The creature stood between him and the path ahead, its gaze locked onto him with an intensity that made his skin crawl. Karin was watching again, testing him. This wasn't about the storm anymore. This was something else. This was Karin making its next move. Rylan gripped his knife tighter, his mind racing through his options. There weren't many. He could try to fight it, but that felt pointless. The creature was massive, easily twice his height, and made of the same indestructible material that formed the planet itself. He could run, but where? There was nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. Karen didn't allow escape. The creature took a step forward, its legs moving with a mechanical grace that seemed impossible for something so large. Its eyes never left him, glowing with a cold, unfeeling light. Ryland didn't move. He knew what this was. This wasn't just a predator, 
This was Karin's well made manifest, a guardian or a sentinel, sent to judge him. The knife in his hand was useless. This wasn't a fight he could win with brute force or cunning. This was something deeper, something far more ancient. So he didn't. He held his ground, his eyes locked onto the creature's glowing gaze. The air around him felt charged with energy, as if the very atmosphere was watching, waiting to see how he would respond. The creature took another step forward, closing the distance between them. Its presence was overwhelming now, suffocating in its intensity. Ryland could feel the weight of it pressing down on him, but he refused to move. He wouldn't give Karin the satisfaction. The creature turned its head slightly, as if listening to something far away. Then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, it began to withdraw. Its legs folded back into the earth, its body sinking into the ground, disappearing without a trace. The landscape smoothed over, and once again, it was as if nothing had happened. Rylan exhaled slowly, his muscles trembling from the strain. Karin had retreated, for now, but the test wasn't over. It was never over. He continued forward, his senses heightened, every step measured. The night was upon him now, and the stars above seemed distant, cold, and indifferent. The air had cooled, and with it came a sense of foreboding. Karen had more to show him. He could feel it. Hours passed in silence as he trekked through the barren landscape. The ground beneath him shifted constantly, as if alive, but he had grown used to it. Karin's tricks no longer surprised him. He knew the planet would strike again, and when it did, he would be ready. Then, in the distance, he saw it. A structure. Rylan approached cautiously, his hand still gripping the knife. As he neared the structure, he could feel a low hum emanating from it, a vibration that resonated in his bones. The entrance was open, a gaping maw of darkness that seemed to swallow the light around it. Without hesitation, Rylan stepped inside. The air was different here, thicker, colder. The walls of the structure were smooth and featureless curving inward as if the entire place was one giant, living organism. The hum grew louder as he moved deeper into the structure, the sound reverberating through his skull. Then he saw it. He stepped closer, his heart pounding in his chest. The orb pulsed again, and Rylan felt a wave of energy wash over him. His mind was flooded with images, visions of the past, the future, the galaxy itself unraveling and reforming in an endless cycle of creation and destruction. This was Karin's heart, the source of its power, the core of its will, and it had chosen him. The orb pulsed one final time, and Ryland's vision blurred. The chamber around him began to fade, the walls dissolving into darkness. The last thing he saw was the orb, glowing brighter and brighter until it consumed everything. Then, nothing. Karin had remade him. 
His body ached in unfamiliar ways, as if every cell had been stretched and twisted. His muscles, once used to the rigors of military life, now felt foreign. He blinked against the dull light surrounding him, but there was no sky, no horizon, just the smooth, sterile surface of the chamber. Karin had stripped away something vital, but it had replaced it with something darker, something powerful. Ryland's first instinct was to check himself for wounds, but there were none. His skin had no cuts, no burns. The pain wasn't from any external source. The transformation had taken place deep within him, reshaping what made him human. He didn't know what had changed, but he could feel it. Something lurking just beneath his skin, in the marrow of his bones. It wasn't just physical, it was mental, too. The orb had altered his thoughts, his sense of self. Memories came back to him, not as clear recollections, but as fragments, disjointed moments of time that felt like they belonged to someone else. His mind wasn't just his anymore. Karin had touched it, and that touch lingered. For a moment, he tried to stand, his legs shaky under the weight of this new existence. He could feel the ground beneath his feet, but it felt distant, like he was standing on a platform floating in the dark. Reality itself seemed thin, like it could collapse at any moment. Then the voices began. They were faint at first, whispering in the back of his mind. Just beyond the threshold of understanding, he couldn't make out the words, but he knew they were there, watching, waiting. Ryland forced himself to focus. This was the next test. Karin was playing its hand again, pushing him to the limits of sanity. The chamber he was in was no longer the one he'd entered. It had shifted, its architecture warping to something more alien. The walls pulsed with a soft light, breathing in and out in time with the whispers in his head. There was no longer any doubt, this wasn't just a place. This wasn't just a planet. Chiron was alive. It had taken him, reshaped him, and now it was waiting to see what he would do with the power it had given. He walked forward, his steps more confident now, but the ground beneath him still felt wrong. As he moved, the chamber shifted again. The walls expanded, revealing a long corridor that stretched out into the distance, curving impossibly, as if defying the laws of physics. Karin was reshaping the very space around him. But why? The whispers in his mind grew louder. He could hear them now, distinct words forming within the noise. You are not alone. He stopped. The words weren't his. They weren't even Karin's. They came from somewhere deeper, somewhere far beyond the physical realm. He could feel it, the presence of something else. Something vast. Something ancient. As he moved, the corridor opened up into a vast chamber, the ceiling stretching so high it disappeared into the darkness above. In the center of the room, suspended in the air, was another orb. But this one was different. It wasn't glowing like the first. It was dark, pulsing faintly with energy, but it was incomplete. Rylan could feel the power emanating from it, but it was fractured, as though something had been taken from it long ago. And standing beneath the orb was Torek. Rylan approached cautiously, his hand instinctively moving toward his belt. But there was no weapon there. Just his bare hands. It didn't matter. He no longer needed weapons in the traditional sense. He could feel the power humming within him, waiting to be unleashed. Torek turned, its gaze meeting Rylan's with an intensity that made his skin crawl. The alien's voice was quiet, 
but it echoed through the chamber with a gravity that demanded attention. Ryland didn't answer. He wasn't sure he had an answer. The truth of Curran was beyond words, beyond understanding. It wasn't just a planet. It was something far greater, far more dangerous than any of them had realized. This is what we've been fighting for, Torek continued, his voice tinged with a sadness that Ryland hadn't expected. Not power, not territory, but this. He gestured to the dark orb, his hand trembling slightly. Rylan could see it now. Torek wasn't just a soldier. He was something else. Something broken. The toll of Karin had taken its grip on the alien, just as it had on Rylan. Rylan stepped closer his mind racing. The orb pulsed faintly, its energy beckoning him forward, but he hesitated. He could feel the weight of the moment, the gravity of what Torek was saying. This wasn't just about survival anymore. This was about something far larger, something cosmic. What does it want? Rylan asked, his voice low, almost afraid to hear the answer. Ryland's stomach twisted. The whispers in his mind grew louder, more insistent. The power within him surged, threatening to overwhelm him, but he held it back. He couldn't let it take him, not yet, not until he understood. Karin is alive, Torik continued, but it's dying. The power that once sustained it has been fractured, broken. It needs someone to restore it, to become part of it. Ryland clenched his fists his mind reeling from the implications. This was no longer just a battle for survival. This was a battle for the very essence of life itself. Karen wanted to remake him, reshape him into something more than human. But at what cost? Why me? Rylan asked, his voice trembling slightly. Torek's eyes met his, and for the first time, Rylan saw the fear in them. Because you're the only one left. The weight of those words settled over him like a shroud. He was alone. The others had failed. Karin had chosen him because there was no one else. And now, the fate of this ancient power rested in his hands. The dark orb pulsed again, its energy washing over him like a wave. Rylan felt it pulling him closer, beckoning him to step forward, to embrace the power that Karin was offering. But something held him back. He could feel the darkness lurking within the orb, the fractured will of a long-dead civilization. This wasn't just power. This was a trap. Karen wanted to consume him, to take everything that made him human and twist it into something else. You don't have to do this, Torek said quietly, his voice filled with desperation. You can walk away. You can leave this place and never look back. But Rylan knew that wasn't true. There was no walking away from Karen. The planet had chosen him, and it wouldn't let him go so easily. The whispers in his mind grew louder, more insistent. The power surged within him, threatening to tear him apart. But he held on, refusing to let it take him. He wouldn't let Karin win. With a surge of strength, Ryland stepped forward, his hand reaching out toward the dark orb, the energy crackled around him, filling the chamber with a deafening roar as the power of the ancient world surged through him. The whispers in his mind screamed in agony, but Rylan held on, refusing to be consumed. He could feel Karin's will pushing against him, trying to take control, but he fought back with every ounce of strength he had left. The orb pulsed one final time, and the world around him exploded in a blinding flash of light. When the light faded, Rylan was standing alone in the chamber. The dark orb was gone, its power extinguished. The whispers in his mind were silent. He had won. But at what cost? His body ached with exhaustion, his mind numb from the strain of the battle. But he was still himself. Chiron hadn't taken him. He was still human. But something was different. 
he could feel it deep within him, lurking just beneath the surface. The power of Karin hadn't left him. It was still there, waiting, watching. The silence in the chamber was suffocating, broken only by the distant hum of unseen machinery. Rylan stood alone, his senses heightened in a way that felt unnatural. The power of Karin lingered within him, a whisper at the edge of his consciousness. Every breath felt like a betrayal. Was it really his, or had Karin claimed more of him than he realized? He scanned the room. Torek had vanished without a trace, leaving Rylan to confront the vast emptiness that echoed in his mind. The chamber, which once pulsed with ancient energy, was now lifeless, cold, like a corpse drained of its last breath. The orb's destruction had triggered something irreversible. But what? Rylan clenched his fists, feeling the strange pulse of power under his skin. His hands, they didn't feel like his own anymore. The blood in his veins throbbed with an intensity that made him question his humanity. This wasn't just strength. This was something else entirely. A change. Something beyond mere physicality. The whispers had stopped, but he wasn't foolish enough to think they were gone. They were waiting, patient, calculating, waiting for their moment. His mind, once sharp and tactical, now raced with thoughts that weren't his own. Memories flickered like fragments of a shattered mirror, reflecting lives and battles he never fought. These weren't hallucinations. Karin had given him access to something far darker and deeper, a collective consciousness of those it had consumed before him. The idea chilled him to his core. How many others had Karin devoured? He shook his head, trying to clear the fog. He needed to move. Staying in the chamber felt like waiting to die. Or worse, waiting to become something he feared. Something no longer human. The exit appeared at the far end of the room, a black, seamless door carved into the alien architecture. The edges of it shimmered with a faint light, as though the very material was alive, shifting under his gaze. Every step toward the door felt like a step into the unknown, a deeper dive into Karin's madness. When his hand touched the surface, the door melted away, revealing the corridor beyond. Rylan stepped through cautiously, his senses on high alert. There was no telling what Karin had planned next. As the door sealed behind him, the corridor stretched endlessly ahead, its walls rippling like water. The air was thick with a scent of something metallic, a sharp tang that clung to his throat. The further he walked, the more he could feel it, the presence. It was everywhere, not a being, but an essence seeping into the fabric of the space around him. Karen wasn't just alive, it was sentient, and it was watching. Suddenly, the ground shifted beneath him. Without warning, the corridor collapsed in on itself, the walls morphing, twisting into something new. He fell, tumbling through a vortex of light and shadow, his body weightless as reality bent around him. When he hit solid ground, the world was no longer a corridor. He was standing on the edge of a cliff, the jagged rocks plunging into an abyss that stretched farther than the eye could see. Above, the sky was a swirling storm of red and black, violent clouds colliding like warring gods. And beyond the horizon, towering structures, monoliths of an ancient race, stood silhouetted against the chaotic sky. Their design was unmistakably alien, yet somehow familiar, as if they had been waiting for him. He was not alone. From the shadows, figures emerged. They were not human. Their forms were twisted, bodies elongated, their faces blank voids. And yet, despite their monstrous appearance, Rylan could feel something familiar in them, a connection, a bond that transcended the physical. Karin's children, he muttered under his breath, his heart pounding. The figures didn't move, but he could feel their gaze upon him. They were waiting. For what, he wasn't sure, but it was clear that they had been watching him for longer than he realized. Were they victims of Karin or its creations? There was no telling, and Rylan wasn't in the mood to find out. But there was one thing he knew, they weren't here to talk. The ground beneath his feet trembled as the figures began to move, their steps slow but deliberate. Rylan's instincts flared, the pulse of power within him reacting to the threat. His vision sharpened, his reflexes heightened. He could feel every particle of air around him, every shift in the environment, as though Karin's essence had unlocked a part of his mind he never knew existed. 
He didn't wait for them to make the first move. With a burst of speed that caught even him off guard, Rylan launched himself forward, fist clenched, ready to face whatever Karin had sent his way. The first of the figures met his attack head-on, its blank face mere inches from his own. But something strange happened. Instead of colliding with the creature, Rylan passed through it like smoke. His body phased through the figure, and for a moment, his mind was flooded with images, memories, flashes of battles, of lives lived and lost, of worlds consumed by war. The sensation was overwhelming, disorienting, as though he had just stepped into the mind of another being. He stumbled, regaining his balance, but the figures didn't relent. They surrounded him, their forms shifting like shadows. Every time he tried to strike, he passed through them, and with each failed attempt, more memories flooded his mind. The lives of soldiers, explorers, and innocents, all tied to Karen in some way, filled his thoughts, their emotions and experiences merging with his own. But this wasn't an attack. This was something far worse. This was assimilation. Karen was trying to overwrite him. The realization hit him like a sledgehammer. The orb, the whispers, the power, it had all been leading to this moment. Karen didn't want him dead. It wanted him consumed, absorbed into its collective. The figures surrounding him weren't enemies. They were the remnants of those who had come before him, those who had failed to escape Karin's grasp. But he wouldn't fail. He couldn't. Rylan let out a roar, tapping into the raw energy coursing through his veins. He focused, pulling the power inward, pushing back against the flood of memories. He wasn't going to be another nameless soul added to Karin's collection. The figures hesitated, their forms flickering as if sensing his resistance. They weren't invincible. They were bound by the same rules as everything else on this cursed planet. With a surge of willpower, Rylan forced the memories out of his mind, banishing the lives that weren't his. The figures faltered, their bodies disintegrating into wisps of shadow before vanishing completely. The ground beneath him stopped trembling, and the oppressive presence lifted, if only slightly. Panting, Rylan looked up at the swirling sky, his chest heaving with exertion. Karin had underestimated him. It thought it could break him like it had broken so many others, but he wasn't like them. He wasn't just another explorer or soldier. He was more than that. He had to be. But even as the thought crossed his mind, doubt crept in. How much of that power was his, and how much had Karin already taken from him, how much longer could he hold on before he lost himself completely? A flash of light caught his attention, drawing his gaze to the horizon. One of the towering monoliths had begun to glow, a brilliant beam of light shooting into the sky. It pulsed with energy, a beacon calling him forward. The path was clear, but Rylan knew it wouldn't be easy. Karin was still testing him, still trying to break him down, piece by piece. But he wouldn't stop. He couldn't stop. The fate of more than just himself hung in the balance. He had to get to that monolith. He had to find the truth. With one last glance at the abyss below, Rylan turned and sprinted toward the light. The monolith loomed larger than Rylan had anticipated, its surface covered in intricate patterns that seemed to shift and change as he approached. It was unlike anything he had ever seen, and yet, somehow, it felt familiar as if he had seen it before in a dream or a nightmare. The air around the monolith crackled with energy, and as he drew closer, he could feel the power radiating from it, pulling him in. This was the heart of Karin, the source of everything. The answers to the questions that had plagued him since he first set foot on the planet lay within. But as he reached out to touch the surface, a voice rang out, clear and commanding. You've come far, but are you prepared to face the truth? Rylan froze. The voice was not his own, nor was it the whispers of Karin. This was something else, something familiar. A figure stepped out from behind the monolith, cloaked in shadow. Rylan's heart skipped a beat as the figure moved into the light, revealing a face he hadn't expected to see again. Daniels. His old squad leader. The man who had been lost during their first mission on Karin. The man who had died but here he was, standing before Rylan, alive, or something close to it. What? How? Rylan stammered, 
his mind racing to make sense of what he was seeing. Daniel smiled, but there was no warmth in it, only a cold, calculated expression. You don't understand yet, but you will. Everything you've experienced, everything you've fought for, it's all been leading to this moment. Rylan took a step back, his instincts screaming at him to run. But he couldn't. Not now. What are you talking about? Rylan demanded, his voice steady despite the chaos in his mind. Daniel's smile widened, and he took a step forward, his eyes gleaming with something dark and malevolent. Karin isn't just a planet, it's a choice, and now you have to make yours. The world around Ryland seemed to tilt, the ground shifting beneath his feet as Daniel's words sank in. A choice? What kind of choice? Daniel's raised a hand, and the monolith behind him pulsed with energy, its patterns glowing brighter. You can embrace Karin's power, become one with the collective, or you can fight it. But know this. Once you choose, there's no going back. Ryland's mind raced. Embrace the power. Join the collective. The very idea made his skin crawl. But what other choice did he have? The power was already inside him, growing stronger with every passing moment. If he didn't control it, it would consume him. But fighting it, rejecting Karin, that would mean risking everything, including his humanity. Daniel stepped closer his voice low and insistent. You've already felt it, haven't you? The power coursing through your veins, the memories of those who came before you. You're not like them, Rylan. You were chosen. Karin saw something in you. Rylan's heart pounded in his chest as he stared at Daniel's, his mind torn between fear and curiosity. Chosen. The word echoed in his mind, gnawing at the edges of his thoughts. Choose wisely, Rylan, Daniel said, his voice a whisper now. Because once you do, there's no turning back. Rylan clenched his fists, his body trembling with the weight of the decision before him. This was it. The moment of truth. And the consequences of his choice would ripple far beyond this cursed planet. Rylan Kane had been trained to expect the worst. In fact, he had been molded by it, sculpted into a weapon forged in the depths of a death world where nature's sole purpose was to break the weak and sharpen the strong. Yet, standing at the precipice of the monolith, he felt something he hadn't anticipated, uncertainty. Karin, the planet that had already tried to claim his life countless times, now reached into him, not through violence, but through a pull that resonated deep in his bones. The black stone surface beneath his hand thrummed in irregular beats, like a heart struggling to pump life into a corpse. The hum of the monolith wasn't just sound, it was an echo, reverberating in his mind. Rylan had heard stories of soldiers driven mad by the monolith. The stories spoke of whispers, of men who saw the universe unravel in front of their eyes, who lost their sense of time and reality. But this was no whisper. This was a scream, a scream that only Rylan could hear. Captain, Torek's voice broke through the tension, his tone laced with concern. The alien's eyes flickered across the towering stone, his reptilian pupils narrowing as if he too could sense its power. We shouldn't be here. This place, it twists things, minds, especially. Ryland didn't answer immediately. He wasn't ignoring his companion's warning. He simply couldn't. His mind was drowning in an ocean of dissonance. Each pulse of the monolith sent waves crashing through his consciousness, warping memories blurring the line between reality and the past. You feel it too, don't you? Torek pressed, stepping closer. This isn't just another obstacle. This is something else entirely. Whatever this is. This is why we're here, Rylan interrupted, his voice colder than he intended. His hand fell from the stone, but the resonance lingered inside him, like a shadow that refused to leave. You think I don't know what's at stake? We've faced death in more ways than you can count. If the monolith holds answers, then we're staying. Torek narrowed his gaze. Answers, maybe. But at what cost, Captain? That was the question, wasn't it? At what cost? Rylan didn't have an answer. Not one that he could vocalize, at least. Every step he took on Karin had been a step further away from the man he used to be. Each kill, each survival, had stripped away layers of who he thought he was. 
Now, standing before the monolith, he didn't even recognize the reflection it cast back at him. Suddenly, without warning, a vision flooded his mind. A sharp flash, an image of Earth, not the Earth he remembered, but an Earth ravaged by war. Cities turned to dust, skies blackened by the smoke of a thousand burning machines. In the distance, towering over the wreckage like gods, were figures clad in impossible armor, their bodies twisted, inhuman, yet undeniably familiar. They moved through the devastation like reapers, harvesting the remnants of humanity's legacy. It was over in an instant, yet it felt like an eternity. Ryland staggered, his hand instinctively reaching for the side of his head as if he could claw the vision from his mind. But it wouldn't leave. The afterimage of those armored beings lingered, haunting the edges of his perception. What did you see? Torek's voice was quieter now, almost respectful of the storm raging inside Ryland's skull. Nothing, Ryland lied, swallowing the fear that threatened to creep into his voice. We keep moving. Torek's gaze held on him for a moment longer than usual, but he didn't argue. The alien had learned long ago that pushing Rylan was like pushing against the tide, futile and often dangerous. The path led them deeper into the heart of the monolith's shadow, where the light from the twin suns of Corin no longer reached. The darkness was absolute, a void that seemed to devour sound and time itself. Their only guide was the soft glow of their tactical visors, casting long, twisted shadows against the jagged rocks that jutted out like broken teeth. And then they saw it. At first, it was just a shimmer, like the air itself was bending, warping in response to some unseen force. But as they drew closer, it became clear the monolith wasn't just a stone structure. It was a doorway, a portal to somewhere else. Impossible, Torek whispered, though the awe in his voice was unmistakable. No technology, nothing we have could create something like this. Ryland's heart pounded in his chest. He didn't understand the mechanics of it, but he didn't need to. The portal, the monolith, this planet, it was all connected, and it was all pulling him in. For a moment, he hesitated. Crossing that threshold would mean surrendering control, and control was the one thing he had left. But then the vision of the earth, broken and burning, flashed in his mind again, and he knew there was no choice. Whatever lay on the other side of that portal, it held the answers they needed. Answers that could save everything, or damn them all. Stay close, he muttered to Torek before stepping through. The sensation was unlike anything Rylan had experienced before. One moment, he was surrounded by the cold, oppressive darkness of Karin, and the next, warmth, blinding light filled his vision, followed by a sense of weightlessness, as though the very laws of physics had been suspended. His body seemed to float, caught between two realities. And then, with a sharp jolt, he was somewhere else. The landscape that greeted him was breathtaking, but in the worst possible way. It was a twisted parody of life, a world where nature had been distorted, mutated by some dark force. The trees, if they could even be called that, were grotesque, their branches contorted into unnatural shapes, their leaves dripping with a thick, black sap. The ground beneath Ryland's feet was soft, like flesh, and each step left an imprint that oozed with dark liquid. This place wasn't just hostile, it was alive. Torek materialized beside him, and Ryland could see the alien's pupils dilate as he took in their surroundings. This, this is wrong, Captain. We need to leave, now. But Ryland couldn't move. His eyes were fixed on a figure in the distance, standing atop a ridge. It was one of the beings from his vision, the armored giants. But now, seeing it in the flesh, he realized it wasn't just armor. The thing was part machine, part flesh, its body fused with the same dark material that coated the ground and the trees. Its face, what little was visible, was a grotesque mockery of humanity, with cold, dead eyes that seemed to pierce through Ryland's very soul. As if sensing his gaze, the creature turned slowly, its movements impossibly fluid for something so massive. And then, it spoke, not in words, but in thoughts. Its voice slithered into Ryland's mind, bypassing all his defenses. You should not have come here. Ryland gritted his teeth, fighting the urge to respond. But the creature's presence was overwhelming. 
its consciousness pressing down on him like a weight. He could feel it probing, searching for something inside him, something it wanted. You are not ready for what lies ahead, the voice continued, its tone dripping with contempt. Turn back, while you still have the chance. There are things in this world that even your kind cannot survive. Rylan clenched his fists, the weight of his decision bearing down on him. This was more than he had bargained for. Karin had always been a place of trial, but this, this was something darker. A force older than any battle he had faced, more dangerous than any enemy. Yet even as the creature's voice clawed at his mind, Rylan couldn't turn back. He had come too far, seen too much. We're not leaving, he whispered, his voice barely audible over the howling wind. He turned to Torek, his resolve hardening. We push forward, no matter what. The alien stared at him for a moment, his reptilian eyes reflecting a mixture of fear and admiration. And then, with a reluctant nod, he followed Ryland deeper into the unknown. The journey ahead was unlike anything they had faced before. The landscape twisted and changed with each step, as though the very fabric of reality was in flux. Creatures, half seen in the shadows, watched them with predatory eyes, but none dared to approach. The air itself was thick, oppressive, as though it was trying to crush them under its weight. And all the while, Rylan could feel the presence of the creature from the ridge, watching, waiting. The deeper Rylan and Torek ventured into this twisted realm, the more the landscape defied any logic or memory of Karn. The planet had always been a place of danger, but here the danger was something far more sinister, more intelligent. It wasn't just a wilderness meant to crush the unprepared. This was a living nightmare, and it was aware of their every movement. Every step sent strange ripples across the ground, as though they walked upon the surface of an unholy ocean. The sky above them churned with dense clouds that shifted in hues of red and black, not like any sky Rylan had ever seen, and the air, thick, suffocating, filled with whispers too faint to make out, gave the impression that something, or someone, was watching, or worse, waiting. Torek glanced at Rylan from time to time, his eyes reflecting the dim light of their surroundings. The alien's stoic nature had been Rylan's only comfort, but now even Torek seemed unsettled. His gaze darted from one shadow to another, each flicker in the distance making his tail twitch with unease. He had fought beside Rylan long enough to fear little, but this place was breaking through that fear. You hear it too, right? Torek finally asked, his voice no longer holding its usual confidence. His hand lingered near the hilt of his weapon, as if waiting for something to spring from the darkness. Rylan remained silent for a moment, his jaw clenched tight. Of course he heard it. Those whispers, they weren't just sound, they were intent. The same feeling he'd had when the creature had spoken directly into his mind now pervaded the very air. It was as though the realm itself was trying to communicate. It's not real, Rylan said, more to himself than to Torek. It's trying to make us doubt ourselves. Keep your head on straight. Torek didn't respond but his expression said enough. He wanted to believe Rylan, but the evidence of his senses told him otherwise. Rylan pressed on, refusing to acknowledge the creeping dread that threatened to slow his steps. It was one thing to face physical danger, but this, this was an attack on the mind. The boundaries between reality and hallucination were blurring with every passing second, and the more he tried to ground himself, the more the surroundings fought to tear that sense of reality apart. Suddenly, the whispers grew louder. Turn back. There is no escape. This place will consume you. The voices came from nowhere and everywhere all at once. Each one spoke in a different tone, a different cadence, but the message was the same. It clawed at their resolve, hammering at the walls they had built in their minds to keep themselves sane. Rylan forced himself to keep walking. He wouldn't succumb. Couldn't. But then he stopped. Ahead of them, in the distance, a figure loomed. Not like the hulking, armored creatures he had seen in his vision. This one was smaller, more human, but no less menacing. The figure stood motionless, its features obscured by the haze of the air, yet its presence was undeniable. It radiated a malevolence that was almost palpable. Do you see that? Torek whispered, 
his voice barely above a breath. Rylan nodded, his hand tightening around the grip of his rifle. There was something about the figure that drew his attention, something that made his pulse quicken, not out of fear, but recognition. As they approached, the details became clearer. The figure was cloaked in shadow, its face hidden beneath a hood that seemed to merge with the darkness around it. But its eyes, those cold, hollow eyes, stared directly at Rylan, as though they had been waiting for him. Who are you? Rylan demanded, his voice steady despite the pounding in his chest. The figure remained silent for a moment, but Rylan felt its gaze piercing through him. Then, without warning, it spoke, not with a voice, but with a thought that flooded his mind. You already know who I am. Rylan's breath caught in his throat. He knew that voice, or at least the feeling it invoked. It was the same as the monolith, the same as the creature from the ridge. But this was different. This voice was closer, more intimate, as though it was a part of him. I don't know you, Rylan growled, shaking his head to dispel the sensation. I've never seen you before. The figure took a step closer, the movement slow and deliberate, like a predator toying with its prey. Lies. Torek's hand went to his weapon, but Rylan gestured for him to hold. There was no point in engaging. Not yet. This thing, whatever it was, wanted something from them. The darkness around it seemed to pulse and sink with the monolith's resonance, and Rylan felt the familiar tug again the pull that had drawn him deeper into the mystery from the start. What do you want? Rylan asked, his voice quieter now, more measured. The figure tilted its head, the shadowed features of its face giving no indication of emotion. I want what you want, Rylan Kane. I want freedom. Rylan's heart skipped a beat. It wasn't the words that startled him, but the way they were spoken, like a mirror, reflecting his own desires back at him. He had spent so long running, fighting, surviving, that he had almost forgotten what he was fighting for. But this place, this realm, it was awakening something in him, something he had buried long ago. The figure took another step closer, and the ground beneath their feet rippled as though reacting to its presence. You are not the only one seeking escape. We are all trapped here, Rylan. You, me, your companion, and them. At that last word, the figure gestured toward the horizon, where the distorted forms of the armored giants appeared once again. They stood in the distance, silent sentinels, watching. Rylan's blood ran cold. This was no longer just a quest for survival. This was something far more complicated, far more dangerous. The monolith had opened a door, but what lay beyond that door was beyond comprehension. The creatures weren't just mindless predators. They were prisoners, just like him. I'm not trapped, Ryland said, though even he didn't believe it. I can leave. Can you? The figure's voice was mocking now, filled with amusement. This place has already claimed you, Ryland Kane. You are part of it now, whether you realize it or not. Torek growled low in his throat. We don't have time for this, he muttered, his voice barely containing his frustration. We need to find a way out. Rylan ignored him, his eyes still locked on the figure. If I'm trapped, then so are you, he said. So what's your game? Why talk to me? The figure's eyes gleamed from beneath its hood, and for the first time, Rylan sensed something beyond the malevolence, something that almost resembled desperation. Because you have something I need. Before Rylan could respond, the figure lunged. Its movement was impossibly fast, faster than Ryland's reflexes could process. In an instant, the shadowy form was upon him, its hands reaching for his chest. But instead of physical contact, Ryland felt a wave of cold energy surge through him, as though the figure was trying to tear something out of him, not his body, but his mind. He stumbled back, gasping for breath as the coldness enveloped him. But just as quickly as it had begun, the figure recoiled, as though it had touched something it wasn't meant to. It staggered backward, its form flickering, its eyes wide with confusion. Impossible, it hissed, the voice cracking with disbelief. You, you are different. Rylan didn't understand what had just happened, but the figure's reaction told him enough. Whatever it had been trying to take from him, it had failed, and now it was afraid. Torek raised his weapon, 
aiming it directly at the figure. Enough of this, he snarled. We end this now. But before he could fire, the figure vanished, disappearing into the shadows as though it had never been there. The whispers faded with it, leaving an eerie silence in their wake. Ryland stood there, his heart pounding in his chest, his mind racing with questions. What had the figure seen in him? What had it been trying to take? And most importantly, what did it mean when it said he was different? The ground beneath them rumbled, and in the distance, the towering forms of the armored giants began to move. Slowly at first, but with increasing speed, they advanced toward Rylan and Torek, their massive forms shaking the very earth. We need to move, Torek said, his voice urgent. Now. Rylan nodded, but his mind was elsewhere. The figure's words still echoed in his head, louder than the pounding footsteps of the approaching giants. You are different. What had the monolith done to him? What had this place awoken inside him? And would he ever be the same again? The tremors intensified beneath their feet, as though the world itself was trying to shake them off. Ryland's pulse matched the rhythm of the advancing giants, each step they took sending another shock wave through the air. But what truly disturbed him wasn't the oncoming threat, nor the crumbling ground beneath them. It was the lingering words of the shadowy figure. You are different. There was no time to dwell on it, no space for introspection in the face of what was now bearing down upon them. Yet those words gnawed at the edges of his mind like a slow burning poison. Different, how? And what did that mean for him, for his mission, for the universe that had seemingly wrapped its claws around him? Torek moved with precision, his alien senses sharper than ever in the shifting terrain. Without a word, the two bolted from the crumbling platform, their legs burning as they sprinted toward the nearest outcropping. The giants moved with eerie purpose, their blank, featureless faces aimed directly at them, mechanical, yet primal in their pursuit. There was no mistaking their intent. These creatures, these towering beings, weren't just mindless brutes. They had a purpose, and it was tied to him. The landscape warped, blurring between a vision of crumbling ruins and a broken battlefield. As they ran, reality itself twisted. The air vibrated with tension, the surroundings shifting between mechanical precision and surreal distortion, like Karin was caught between dimensions. Every step felt as though they were traversing not just space, but a deeper, more fragmented reality. Torek, this isn't just some planet, Rylan shouted over the cacophony of the giant's pursuit. We're trapped in something bigger. Torek grunted in acknowledgement, his eyes fixed ahead. This place is a weapon, he muttered, voice gruff, but laced with a trace of fear. A weapon or a prison. Either way, it's alive. The notion struck Rylan hard. Alive. This wasn't just an anomaly or a random distortion of space. The thought that they were inside something living, a sentient being or construct, made his skin crawl. If they were inside a living entity, what did that mean for their chances of escape? And more terrifying, what was this entity's goal? The tremors subsided, but only for a moment. The towering giants slowed their advance, halting as if receiving some unseen command. Rylan and Torek took shelter behind a massive pillar of jagged stone, their breaths labored, eyes scanning the horizon for what came next. It was too quiet, almost suffocating in its silence. Rylan pressed his back against the stone, catching his breath. He wiped a hand across his brow, smearing blood and dirt. We need to figure out what the hell is happening, he said, voice tight. This isn't just a trap, it's playing with us. Torek growled softly, leaning his weight against the stone, eyes scanning their surroundings. Whatever game it's playing, we're running out of time. Suddenly, the whispers returned, faint at first, then growing louder, filling the air around them. It wasn't just random noise. The voices were speaking directly to them, each one layered over the other, a thousand distinct entities sharing the same message. It's too late. You cannot escape. Embrace your fate. Rylan flinched, the pressure of the voices almost unbearable. His mind throbbed, and for a moment, he swore he could feel the presence of the shadowy figure again, watching from the dark edges of his consciousness. Torek's hand gripped Rylan's shoulder, grounding him. 
Ignore it. Focus. It wants you to lose control. With a deep breath, Rylan pushed the voices out of his mind. They couldn't afford to lose control. Not now. The giants had stopped, but that only meant something worse was coming. He could feel it, an impending wave of darkness, deeper than the abyss, something waiting just beyond their senses. And then, the ground gave way. In an instant, the stone beneath their feet crumbled, and they plummeted into the black void below. The sensation of falling was disorienting, the world spinning around them as gravity seemed to twist in all directions. But instead of panic, Ryland felt a strange sense of calm. It was as though the fall had pulled him out of the immediate danger and into something more serene, albeit eerie. When they finally landed, the darkness around them was total. No light, no sound, only the faint pulse of energy that hummed through the air, reminding them that this place was still alive, still watching. Torek rose to his feet first, his glowing eyes cutting through the darkness like twin embers. He muttered a curse in his native tongue and looked around, his movements slow, deliberate. We're underground, he said, more to himself than to Rylan. Deeper than before. Rylan pushed himself upright, the ache in his limbs subsiding as he adjusted to the new environment. What now? he asked, voice low, unsure if sound even carried in this oppressive space. Torek said nothing at first, then tilted his head slightly, his ears twitching as though picking up something Rylan couldn't hear. There's something here, he murmured. Rylan felt it too, a presence, not the same as the shadowy figure, but something older, ancient. It was like the very air vibrated with knowledge, with history that was beyond comprehension. This place, this abyss, wasn't just a tomb. It was a vault of forgotten things, of truths hidden from the universe for eons. And then, as if on cue, a faint light appeared in the distance. Pale and flickering, it liked the faint outline of a structure ahead. Something not built by human hands, nor alien. It was beyond any civilization Rylan had ever encountered. Monolithic, towering, it stood as a testament to whatever dark force governed this realm. Torek moved toward it without hesitation his eyes locked on the structure. Rylan followed, though each step made him more uneasy. The whispers had returned, quieter now, but more insistent, as though they were drawing him closer to some revelation he wasn't ready for. As they neared the entrance to the structure, a massive door carved from black stone loomed before them, covered in intricate patterns, patterns that seemed to shift and change when observed directly. It wasn't just a door, it was a gate, a threshold to something far beyond their understanding. Ryland's pulse quickened, his hand trembling as he reached out to touch the surface of the door. The moment his fingers made contact, a wave of cold energy shot through his body, freezing him in place. For a brief second, he wasn't Ryland Kane anymore. He was something else, someone else. Memories that weren't his flooded his mind. Battles fought in distant galaxies, Wars that span centuries, a universe where the lines between life and death, flesh and machine, had long since blurred. He pulled his hand back, gasping for air. Torek looked at him, his expression unreadable, but Ryland could see the concern in his eyes. What did you see? Torek asked, his voice barely a whisper. Ryland shook his head, trying to make sense of the visions. I don't know, but this isn't just some ancient ruin. It's alive. Torek nodded, his jaw clenched, and it's waiting for us. The door began to open, slowly at first, then with a sudden rush of air as if the structure itself was inhaling. Inside, the darkness gave way to a vast chamber, lit by a strange, ethereal light that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. In the center of the chamber stood a massive altar, and atop it lay a single object, gleaming in the pale light. A weapon. But not just any weapon. This was something far more advanced, far more dangerous than anything Rylan had ever seen. Its sleek design was both alien and familiar, as though it had been forged from the collective knowledge of a thousand civilizations. It pulsed with an energy that was both alluring and terrifying. Torek approached the altar cautiously, his eyes fixed on the weapon. This is what it's been leading us to, he said softly. Rylan followed, his hand itching to reach out and grasp the weapon, 
to feel its power for himself. But something held him back, a voice in the back of his mind warning him of the danger. It's a trap. Rylan hesitated, his hand hovering over the weapon. He could feel its energy, its promise of power. But he could also feel the weight of the decision, the consequences that would come with it. This wasn't just a weapon. It was a choice, one that would shape the future of not just this world, but the entire universe. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, filling his mind with promises of victory, of freedom. But beneath those promises, he could sense the darkness, the evil that had been lurking in the shadows since they first arrived. Torek's hand rested on his shoulder, grounding him once again. We don't have to take it, he said quietly. There's always another way. Rylan looked at him, his mind racing. But he knew that wasn't true. There was no other way. Not anymore. With a deep breath, Rylan reached out and grasped the weapon. And the darkness swallowed them whole. Rylan's fingers closed around the weapon's handle. For a moment, he felt nothing, a fleeting silence, an empty void. But then it surged into him, a flood of memories, of sensations, of voices that were not his own. It was like being drowned in a river of time, every era crashing into him, one after another, relentless and overwhelming. His thoughts fractured, and he could feel himself slipping into something deeper, something darker. You've made your choice. The voice wasn't Torix, and it wasn't coming from any direction. It was inside his head, an ancient presence, something primordial, something born out of time itself. And it wasn't alone. He stumbled back, releasing the weapon instinctively. His hands trembled, his mind reeling from the alien torrent he'd just experienced. Torek was at his side in an instant, eyes sharp, scanning the room for threats, his demeanor as disciplined as ever. What happened? Torek demanded, though his voice held an edge Rylan hadn't heard before. What did it show you? Rylan shook his head, struggling to steady his breath. It's... it's alive. I felt it. Ages. Histories. Things. Things that shouldn't exist. Torek's gaze shifted to the weapon, then back to Rylan. His alien eyes narrowed. This place, it's feeding off of us. Rylan's pulse quickened again. He looked around the chamber, the walls shifting and pulsating as if breathing in unison with the dark force that controlled this place. The structure wasn't just a prison for them, it was something far worse. A conduit, perhaps, or a key. The reality around them wasn't just unstable, it was being manipulated. Every shift in the air, every step they took, seemed to reverberate with a purpose they could barely comprehend. The lines between technology and something ancient, mystical, blurred completely. We've got to get out of here, Rylan muttered. His voice trembled slightly as he tried to regain composure, but even he wasn't convinced by his words. There was no way out. They were too far gone, too deep into the abyss, and whatever dark force was watching them, waiting for them to make the next move, knew it. But Torek didn't respond immediately. He just stared at the altar the weapon still humming with untapped energy, and Rylan noticed something new in his friend's gaze. Hesitation. Or was it curiosity? No, it was something darker. A desire, maybe, for knowledge, for power. Whatever it was, Torek wasn't the same stoic being Rylan had come to know. This place was changing them both. The whispers returned, but louder this time, echoing off the chamber walls, seeping into their minds like venom. It wants you to stay. Why resist the inevitable? Embrace it, and you will understand. Ryland's vision blurred, the air thick with the scent of decay, old and suffocating. His mind fought against the pull of the voices, but they were relentless. Every moment he stood there, he could feel them clawing deeper, reaching for something beyond his consciousness, something they craved. Torek moved closer to the altar, his hand twitched as if he was fighting an internal battle, wanting to grasp the weapon as Rylan had done moments before. I understand now, Torek whispered, almost too softly for Rylan to hear. I see it all. What do you mean? Rylan asked, a knot forming in his stomach. This. This isn't just a place. It's a trial, a test of will. It's why we're here, Rylan. Why you are here. The answers are in that weapon. 
the knowledge we need to fight back, to win. Rylan stepped forward, trying to pull Torek away from the altar, but the alien remained fixed in place. You're not thinking clearly. This place is twisting your mind. We can't trust it. Torek's eyes flashed with something dangerous, an intensity Rylan hadn't seen before. Trust. You still think there's something here we can't understand. This is our destiny. We were brought here for a reason. No, Torek, you don't know what you're saying. Rylan felt panic rising in his chest. The lines between reality and delusion were blurring, and Torek was slipping away into whatever madness the chamber was feeding them. But then, the ground rumbled again, a low, menacing growl that seemed to come from beneath their feet. The weapon pulsed, and the whispers surged into a deafening roar, filling the chamber with an oppressive weight that bore down on them. Accept it. Become one. And then the shadows shifted. Something moved in the dark corners of the chamber, something colossal, unseen but felt, its presence crushing. It slithered along the walls, a mass of living darkness, its form too vast to comprehend. Ryland's heart pounded in his chest. He could feel it, whatever it was, watching them with cold, calculating eyes. He swallowed hard, his throat dry, as the weight of the creature's gaze bore down on him. Torek, he whispered urgently, we need to leave. Now. But Torek wasn't listening. His eyes were locked on the weapon, mesmerized, as if it was the only thing that existed in the world. Without warning, Torek lunged forward, his hand outstretched to grab the weapon. But before he could make contact, the shadows erupted, filling the chamber with a deafening scream. The creature had revealed itself, an abomination of twisted metal and dark tendrils, a hybrid of technology and nightmare. It moved with an unnatural speed, lashing out toward them with a force that shook the entire chamber. Ryland barely had time to react. He threw himself to the side, narrowly avoiding the creature's attack as its tendrils whipped past him. The air crackled with energy, the temperature dropping as frost formed on the floor around them. The creature's presence was suffocating, filling the air with a cold, dark malevolence. Torek was on his feet, weapon in hand. His face was twisted in a mix of rage and determination, eyes glowing with an eerie light. We were brought here to fight this, he growled, his voice barely recognizable. This is our purpose. The creature shrieked again, its tendrils slicing through the air with lethal precision. Torek met the attack head-on dodging and weaving with an agility that belied his size. He swung the weapon with a brutal force, its blade cutting through the creature's dark mass with a sickening hiss. But the creature wasn't easily defeated. For every blow Torek landed, the shadows reformed, growing larger, more menacing. Ryland scrambled to his feet, his heart racing. He wasn't equipped for this kind of battle, this was beyond anything he had ever faced. But Torek was right about one thing, they couldn't run from this. Whatever this creature was, it was tied to the weapon, to this place, and to them. He grabbed a piece of broken debris from the ground, something jagged and sharp, and charged forward. His mind raced, every instinct screaming at him to flee, to get as far away from this nightmare as possible. But he couldn't leave Torek to face this alone. Together, they fought, Ryland striking from the sides, while Torek met the creature's attacks head on. The air was thick with energy, the chamber alive with the sound of battle. Each strike, each movement felt like it was tearing at the very fabric of reality around them. And then, just as suddenly as it began, the creature stopped. Its tendrils froze mid-swing, the shadows pulling back, retreating into the walls. The chamber fell silent, save for their labored breaths. Torek stood still, his chest heaving. He lowered the weapon slowly his eyes still glowing with that strange light. It's not over, he muttered, his voice low, almost a growl. Rylan looked around, his heart still pounding. What do you mean? Torek didn't answer immediately. He turned, his gaze locking onto the far end of the chamber where another door had appeared, massive, intricate, and ominous. Beyond it, Rylan could sense something even darker, more dangerous than the creature they had just faced. We were only the first wave, Torek said softly. His eyes were distant, as though seeing something far beyond the present moment. 
There's more. Ryland's blood ran cold. He could feel it too. The presence beyond the door, waiting for them. Whatever this place was, whatever force had brought them here, it wasn't finished with them yet. Not by a long shot. Torek gripped the weapon tighter, his jaw set in grim determination. We keep going. Ryland hesitated, his mind racing. He could feel the weight of the choice pressing down on him again. But there was no turning back now. Not with Torek so far gone into whatever dark path this place had set him on. Together, they stepped toward the door, and as they crossed the threshold, the darkness swallowed them whole once again. The moment Rylan and Torek stepped through the door, the world shifted again. There was no flicker, no warning, just a sudden, disorienting plunge into complete darkness. Rylan's stomach twisted as the floor seemed to drop out beneath him, and for an agonizing second, he was falling through an abyss. Then he hit solid ground with a bone-jarring impact the force knocking the air from his lungs. The world remained pitch black, the silence absolute, except for the faint ringing in his ears. Ryland's heart pounded, the sound amplified in the oppressive void. He struggled to orient himself, his hands blindly feeling the ground beneath him. It was cold, damp, metallic, nothing like the rough stone of the previous chamber. Toric, his voice sounded small, swallowed by the darkness. There was no response, Panic began to claw at the edges of his mind. Where was Torek? Where were they? Rylan pushed himself up to his feet, trying to steady his breath. He needed to stay calm, to focus. But as his eyes strained against the darkness, the oppressive silence became unbearable. A soft click, almost imperceptible, echoed from somewhere above. Then a dull red light flickered into existence, casting long, distorted shadows across the room. Rylan blinked rapidly, his eyes adjusting to the dim light. The chamber they now stood in was vast, industrial, more a factory than a temple. The walls were made of slick black metal, gleaming like oil, and the floor was a maze of pipes and cables that snaked in every direction, pulsating with some unknown energy. And there, standing at the center of the room, was Torek. But something was wrong. Torek's body was rigid, his posture unnaturally stiff as if he were frozen mid-step. The weapon he had taken from the altar glowed faintly in his hand, its edges shimmering with a dark energy. Ryland took a cautious step forward, his instincts screaming at him to stop. Torek, he called again, his voice tentative. This time, Torek moved, but it wasn't natural. His head jerked to the side, and his eyes, once filled with resolve, were now hollow, devoid of any recognition. His skin had taken on a pallid sheen, and the dark veins that had been creeping up his neck now pulsed with an otherworldly glow. Whatever had taken hold of him in the previous chamber had finished its work. He wasn't Torek anymore. Torek, listen to me, Rylan pleaded, though his own words felt futile. We need to get out of here. You've got to fight whatever this is. The creature that had once been Torek let out a low, guttural growl its eyes narrowing as if processing Ryland's presence. Then, without warning, it moved, fast. In a blink, Torek lunged forward, the weapon slicing through the air with deadly precision. Ryland barely managed to dodge, the blade grazing his arm as he stumbled back. Torek, stop, Ryland shouted, but the thing attacking him was no longer his friend. The weapon in Torek's hand hummed with power, each swing more vicious than the last. Ryland dodged and weaved, his breath coming in ragged gasps as the creature pressed its relentless assault. He could feel the weight of the chamber pressing down on him, the very walls watching, waiting for him to falter. In a moment of clarity, Ryland realized what had happened. The weapon had consumed Torek's mind, twisting him into something else entirely. It had promised power, but it had delivered control, absolute and merciless. Ryland couldn't keep dodging forever. His muscles burned, and his head was spinning from the adrenaline. He needed a plan. Fast. His eyes darted around the room, scanning for anything that could help. But the industrial landscape offered little in the way of escape. Just cold metal, dead machinery, and darkness. Then he saw it, a control panel, partially hidden behind a cluster of pipes. If he could reach it, 
Maybe he could find a way to shut down whatever energy was powering this place. Maybe it would disrupt the weapon or whatever had taken hold of Torek. But the distance between him and the panel was daunting, and Torek, or the thing that had become Torek, was still blocking his path. Ryland's mind raced. He couldn't fight Torek head-on. The creature was too fast, too strong, but he could outthink it. He needed to create a distraction, something that would draw Torek's attention long enough for him to make his move. As Torek swung the weapon again, Ryland ducked low, narrowly avoiding the blade. His hand brushed against the floor, and he felt something, a loose pipe, cold and heavy. He gripped it tightly, his fingers trembling from the strain, and waited for his moment. When Torek lunged forward again, Ryland swung the pipe with all his strength, aiming for the creature's legs. The metal struck with a sickening crack, and Torek stumbled, his balance momentarily thrown off. It wasn't enough to take him down, but it bought Ryland the precious seconds he needed. Without looking back, Ryland bolted for the control panel, his feet pounding against the cold metal floor. He could hear Torek recovering behind him, the creature's snarl echoing through the chamber. His fingers flew over the controls, desperately searching for something, anything, that would stop this nightmare. Finally, he found it, a lever marked, Emergency Override. Without hesitation, Rylan yanked the lever down. The chamber shuddered violently, and the lights flickered, casting strange, jagged shadows across the walls. The hum of the machinery grew louder, more erratic, as if the very fabric of the room was unraveling. And then, with a deafening roar, the energy surging through the pipes exploded outward, a wave of force that slammed into both Rylan and Torek, knocking them off their feet. The weapon in Torek's hand flared with a blinding light, and for a brief moment Rylan thought he could hear the sound of a thousand voices screaming in unison. When the light faded, Rylan found himself lying on his back, his body aching from the impact. He groaned, pushing himself up onto his elbows, and looked around. The chamber was in disarray, pipes burst, walls cracked, and the once humming machinery now lay dormant, its energy spent. And Torek, Torek lay motionless on the ground, the weapon still clutched in his hand. Ryland's heart sank as he crawled toward his friend, his breath catching in his throat. He reached out, his hand trembling, and gently touched Torek's shoulder. Torek, he whispered, his voice hoarse. For a moment, there was no response. But then, slowly, agonizingly, Torek's eyes fluttered open. The dark veins that had marred his skin were gone and the eerie glow had faded from his eyes. He looked dazed, confused, but alive. Rylan, Torek's voice was weak, barely a whisper. What? What happened? Rylan let out a shaky breath, relief flooding through him. You're back. You. You were gone, but you're back. Torek blinked, his brow furrowing as he tried to process what had happened. I don't remember. There was something in my head, Something dark. Ryland nodded, his grip tightening on Torek's shoulder. It's gone now. We shut it down. But even as he said the words, Ryland couldn't shake the feeling that they were still in danger. The weapon was still there, pulsing faintly in Torek's hand, a reminder of the power it held. And the chamber. It felt different now, as if the energy that had once powered it had simply shifted, moved somewhere else. We need to leave, Rylan said, helping Torek to his feet. Before whatever this is comes back. Torek nodded, though his movements were slow, hesitant. The two of them stumbled toward the far end of the chamber, where another door had appeared, similar to the one they had entered through. But as they reached the door, Rylan felt a chill run down his spine. He glanced over his shoulder, and for a brief moment, he thought he saw something, just a flicker of movement a shadow shifting in the corner of his vision. The door slid open with a hiss, revealing a narrow corridor beyond, bathed in dim red light. Rylan and Torek stepped through, their footsteps echoing in the silence. And as the door closed behind them, the chamber fell still once more, the faint hum of unseen machinery, the only sound in the darkness. But deep within the walls, something stirred, a presence, ancient and malevolent, watching, waiting. The trial was far from over, 
and in the depths of the abyss, the real terror was only just beginning. The door shut behind Rylan and Torek with a soft hiss, sealing them into the narrow, dimly lit corridor. The oppressive weight of the chamber they left behind was gone, but the silence that now filled the air was unnerving in its own right. Ryland could feel it, the subtle, ever-present hum of something dark watching, lurking just beneath the surface. Ryland supported Torek, whose body was still sluggish and weak from whatever had possessed him. His skin was cold to the touch, and a thin layer of sweat clung to his forehead. Torek's breathing was shallow, but his eyes flicked open occasionally, a faint recognition dancing in them. We keep moving, Ryland muttered, more to himself than Torek. His mind raced with the events of the last few hours, every twisted turn in their journey building to a single conclusion. They were not just in another world, they were in the belly of something far worse, something that hungered for their very souls. As they made their way down the corridor, the walls around them seemed to shift. The material wasn't just metal, it was alive, pulsing, like veins pushing blood through an organic machine. Rylan pressed a hand against it, feeling the warmth beneath his fingertips. He jerked back. It wasn't the metallic coldness he had expected. The structure around them was feeding on the energy of the place, maybe even them. Torek's breathing grew more labored with each step, and Rylan knew he had to act fast. He scanned the area for an exit, something that would take them out of this labyrinth. But there was nothing, just the endless red-lit passage stretching into infinity. The air grew thicker with each step, as if they were descending into something far more insidious. A low hum began to resonate from somewhere deep within the walls. It wasn't mechanical, it was organic, like the deep, rhythmic heartbeat of a colossal beast. The vibrations grew stronger, rattling through the floor and up Rylan's legs. He quickened his pace, pulling Torek along, desperate to outrun whatever was coming. Finally, they stumbled upon a set of doors, large, obsidian, carved with intricate, alien symbols that glowed faintly in the red light. Ryland's heart pounded as he approached them. They looked like they belonged to an ancient temple, but there was something undeniably technological about the way the symbols hummed with energy. Before he could make a decision, the doors slid open with a soft, ethereal sound. Ryland and Torek entered without hesitation, stepping into a vast, cavernous space. The room was circular, its walls covered in the same pulsating material as the corridor, but it was the ceiling that caught Ryland's attention. Above them, the ceiling was a swirling mass of energy, dark, chaotic, and malevolent. It flickered with flashes of blue and red lightning, forming shapes that vanished as quickly as they appeared. The air here was thick with tension, like standing beneath a storm about to break. In the center of the room, a massive console stood. It was sleek, black, and seemingly out of place in the otherwise organic environment. Dozens of screens displayed alien text, their meanings indecipherable. But one thing was clear. This console controlled something powerful, something Ryland didn't yet understand but instinctively feared. Torek stirred beside him, his grip tightening on Ryland's shoulder. Rylan, he rasped, his voice hoarse, we need to destroy this place. Ryland turned to his friend, the determination in Torek's eyes returning, albeit faintly. The weapon had nearly consumed him, but Torek had fought back. Now, they had to finish what they started. Rylan approached the console, his hands shaking as he reached out to touch the controls. As soon as his fingers made contact, the room reacted violently. The swirling energy above intensified, and the hum of the walls grew louder, more agitated. A voice, smooth and cold, echoed from nowhere and everywhere at once. Intruders, you have come too far. Rylan froze. The voice wasn't just in the room, it was in his head. It reverberated through his thoughts, twisting his memories, his fears. It wasn't the voice of a machine, but something ancient, something alive. You seek to defy me. You do not understand the forces you meddle with. Torek's eyes widened, and Ryland could feel his own pulse quicken. Who? What are you? Ryland demanded, trying to steady his voice. I am what you fear. I am what you seek. I am beyond comprehension, beyond life and death. Ryland clenched his fists, 
his gaze darting back to the console. We're not here to understand you. We're here to end you. The voice laughed, an eerie, disembodied sound that echoed in the depths of their minds. You are but children playing with fire. I have existed before your kind crawled from the mud. I am eternal. You, however, are temporary. The floor beneath them began to shift. Tendrils of black, pulsating energy snaked up from the ground, slowly coiling toward them. Rylan grabbed Torek, pulling him back, but the tendrils moved with a terrifying speed, wrapping around Torek's legs, yanking him to the floor. No, Rylan shouted, lunging forward to grab his friend, but the energy lashed out, sending a bolt of searing pain through his body. He was thrown back, his vision swimming with stars. Torek screamed, his body convulsing as the tendrils tightened, pulling him closer to the center of the room. The console began to glow with an intense light, and Rylan knew whatever was about to happen was beyond anything they could stop. Rylan. Torek gasped, his voice strained. You have to. Destroy it. Before it consumes everything. Rylan's mind raced. The console, it had to be the key. He could feel the energy pulsing through it, feel the dark power controlling this place. But it was so far beyond him. He didn't know where to begin, didn't know if he even could. But Torek's screams spurred him into action. He stumbled to his feet, ignoring the pain that shot through his body and rushed back to the console. His fingers danced over the controls, pressing buttons at random, hoping, praying that one of them would shut this nightmare down. The swirling energy in the ceiling intensified, and the voice grew louder, angrier. You cannot stop me, mortal. I am bound to this place, to the very fabric of reality. You are nothing. Rylan's heart pounded in his chest as he scanned the console for anything that looked like an off switch. But there was nothing, just endless alien symbols and numbers that meant nothing to him. Rylan, Torek's voice was weaker now, his body almost completely enveloped by the tendrils. You have to. Suddenly, a realization hit Rylan like a lightning bolt. It wasn't the console that controlled the energy, it was the energy that controlled the console. The dark force above them wasn't some machine, it was alive, and the only way to destroy it was to sever its connection to this place. Rylan took a deep breath, his mind racing with the impossibility of what he was about to do. He reached into his belt, pulling out the small, makeshift explosive he had fashioned earlier. It was crude, barely enough to take out a wall, but it was all they had. Without hesitation, Rylan slammed the explosive onto the console, securing it as best he could. The timer began to tick down. Thirty seconds. He turned to Torek, who was now almost entirely consumed by the black tendrils. Hang on, he shouted, though he knew there was little chance of escape. Twenty seconds. The voice in his head grew louder, more frantic. You cannot destroy me. I am infinite. You will only doom yourselves. Rylan ignored the voice, rushing to Torek's side. He grabbed hold of his friend's arm, pulling with all his strength. The tendrils resisted, tightening their grip, but Rylan refused to let go. Ten seconds. The room was shaking now, the walls vibrating as if the entire structure was coming apart. The dark energy above them writhed lashing out with bolts of electricity that scorched the floor. Five seconds. With one final, desperate pull, Rylan yanked Torek free from the tendrils. They stumbled toward the door, their bodies weak and battered. Three seconds. The door slid open, and they fell through, collapsing into the corridor just as the explosion ripped through the room behind them. The force of the blast sent a shockwave through the corridor, slamming the door shut and throwing Rylan and Torek against the wall. The ceiling above them cracked, debris falling around them as the entire structure groaned in protest. And then, silence. Rylan lay there, gasping for breath, his body aching from the impact. He turned to Torek, who was barely conscious, but alive. We did it, Rylan whispered, though the words felt hollow. Because even as they lay there, Broken and exhausted, Rylan could feel it. The presence that had spoken to them still lingered, faint but undeniable. The silence that followed was unbearable, 
not the peaceful stillness they hoped for, but a suffocating weight, as if the very air around them had grown thick with malice. Rylan remained still for a moment longer, his body pressed against the cold floor, the faint vibrations of the corridor still echoing through his bones. He knew they couldn't rest here, not now, not yet. Whatever they had unleashed wasn't finished with them. Torek stirred beside him, groaning softly, his body limp from exhaustion. The tendrils had left dark scorch marks along his skin, but he was alive. That had to be enough for now. We have to keep moving, Rylan whispered, forcing himself to sit up. His muscles screamed in protest, but he gritted his teeth, pushing past the pain. There was no room for weakness. Not anymore. Torek blinked up at him, his eyes glazed with confusion and pain. What? Was that? What did we... Not now, Rylan cut him off, his voice low but urgent. We need to get out of here before it comes back. Torek nodded weakly, his face pale. With Rylan's help, he managed to get to his feet, though his legs trembled beneath him. They moved slowly, cautiously, down the corridor, each step echoing louder than it should in the eerie stillness. Rylan couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. The presence, the voice, it hadn't been destroyed. It had just retreated. Whatever they had done had only wounded it, perhaps even made it angrier. And now, as they walked through the desolate structure, he could feel it stirring in the shadows, biding its time. What do you think that was? Torek asked quietly, his voice shaky. It felt like it was alive. Rylan didn't answer immediately. His mind was still reeling, struggling to comprehend what they had encountered. It wasn't just a machine nor was it entirely organic. It was something between, something beyond, a dark intelligence that defied everything they knew, and it was still out there, somewhere, watching. I don't know, Rylan admitted at last, but it's not over. Whatever it was, it's not done with us. They walked in silence for a while, the only sound the soft shuffle of their boots against the smooth floor. The corridor seemed to stretch endlessly ahead of them, the same pulsating walls surrounding them on all sides. Every so often, Rylan glanced over his shoulder, half expecting to see the tendrils of darkness creeping toward them again. But the corridor remained empty, the oppressive silence their only companion. After what felt like hours, they finally came upon a junction. Three paths branched out before them, each one identical to the other, leading deeper into the bowels of the alien structure. Which way? Torek asked, his voice tinged with dread. Rylan hesitated, his eyes scanning the paths ahead. There was no way to tell which one would lead them out, or which one would lead them straight back into the jaws of whatever entity they had disturbed. His instincts, however, tugged at him toward the middle path. He couldn't explain why, but something about it felt familiar. This one, he said, pointing toward the center passage. It's our best shot. Torek didn't argue. They were too far past questioning each other's decisions. Together, they ventured down the middle path, the tension between them mounting with every step. The deeper they went, the more the walls seemed to change. The smooth, metallic surface they had become accustomed to slowly gave way to something more twisted. Organic tendrils began to weave through the walls, growing thicker and more prominent with each passing meter. The red lighting dimmed, casting long shadows that seemed to writhe in the corners of their vision. Rylan felt his pulse quicken. Whatever lay ahead, it wasn't just the remnants of some advanced technology. It was something far older, far darker. He could feel it now, not just watching them, but pulling them in, drawing them toward its heart. Rylan, Torek's voice was barely more than a whisper, but it was laced with fear. I don't think we're alone. Rylan stopped, his eyes narrowing as he strained to listen. At first, he heard nothing, just the faint hum of the walls and the soft shuffle of their footsteps. But then, a sound reached his ears, faint, almost imperceptible, but unmistakable. The soft, wet slither of something moving just out of sight. His hand tightened around the hilt of his weapon, his muscles tensing. Stay close, he muttered, his eyes scanning the shadows ahead. As they moved forward, the sound grew louder, more distinct. It was no longer just one creature. There were many, 
The walls seemed to pulse with their movement, the tendrils shifting and squirming as if responding to the presence of something much larger, much more dangerous than anything they had faced so far. The corridor opened into a vast chamber, larger than any they had encountered before. The ceiling stretched high above them, disappearing into darkness, while the floor was covered in a thick layer of something wet and viscous. The air was heavy with a stench of decay, and the walls were alive with writhing, black tendrils that seemed to pulse in time with the beat of an unseen heart. At the center of the room, a massive figure loomed, its body twisted and grotesque, its eyes glowing with a dark, malevolent intelligence. It was the source of the voice, the presence that had haunted them throughout the structure. You, the voice echoed through the chamber, though its source remained unclear. You think you can defy me? You think you can destroy me? Rylan stepped forward, his heart pounding in his chest. His hand tightened around the hilt of his weapon, but he knew, deep down, that it wouldn't be enough. This thing, this entity, was beyond anything they could fight. It was ancient, powerful, and it had no intention of letting them leave. I don't know what you are, Ryland said, his voice steady despite the fear clawing at his insides. But we're not your prey. The creature's glowing eyes fixed on him, and Ryland could feel the weight of its gaze pressing down on him, cold and unfeeling. You are nothing, the voice hissed, its tone dripping with contempt. Your kind is weak, fragile. You think you can challenge me? You think you can survive? The tendrils that lined the walls began to move, slowly at first, then faster, twisting and writhing as they reached out toward them. Torek staggered back, his eyes wide with terror. We need to move, Ryland said, his voice urgent. Now. But there was no escape. The tendrils were everywhere, closing in on them from all sides. Rylan raised his weapon, firing blindly into the mass of darkness, but it was like fighting smoke. The tendrils moved with unnatural speed, wrapping around his legs, pulling him to the ground. Torek screamed as the tendrils reached for him too, dragging him toward the center of the room, toward the towering creature that watched them with cold, calculating eyes. Rylan struggled against the tendrils, his breath coming in ragged gasps as they tightened around his chest, squeezing the air from his lungs. He could feel his strength waning, the darkness closing in. But then something shifted. The ground beneath him trembled, and the air grew thick with a new, unfamiliar energy. The creature's eyes flickered, its focus momentarily distracted. In that instant, Ryland saw his chance. With a burst of strength, he tore free from the tendrils, stumbling to his feet. His vision swam, but he forced himself forward toward Torek, who was still struggling against the dark mass that had ensnared him. With a shout, Rylin plunged his weapon into the tendrils, severing them in one swift motion. Torek collapsed to the ground, gasping for breath, but Rylin didn't give him time to rest. He hauled him to his feet, and together they ran. The creature roared behind them, the sound reverberating through the chamber as the walls began to shake. The entire structure was coming apart, collapsing in on itself as the dark energy that held it together unraveled. They ran without looking back, their feet pounding against the slick floor as the walls crumbled around them. The light flickered, and the air was filled with the sound of grinding metal and snapping tendrils. But Rylan didn't stop. He couldn't. Not until they were out. Not until they were free. Rylan and Torek dashed through the crumbling corridor, the ground shaking violently beneath their feet. The entire structure groaned as if it was alive, convulsing in its death throes. But there was no time to consider what it was. Their focus was singular, escape. The path ahead splintered in every direction as fractures snaked across the walls and ceiling chunks of debris falling around them like an avalanche of metal and flesh. Rylan pushed forward, the weight of the moment bearing down on his mind. The creature's presence lingered behind them, its furious roar vibrating through his bones, growing distant, but never too far. Faster, Rylan shouted as he grabbed Torek by the arm, half dragging him over the uneven ground. Torek was pale, his breath ragged, but he kept pace his terror overriding the pain of his injuries. The chamber ahead opened up into a larger space, a circular room lined with strange, 
pulsing conduits and darkened terminals. The room seemed less organic, more mechanical, as if they were reaching the core of the structure's technology. The contrast was unsettling, the sudden transition from flesh-like walls to cold, hard metal. What now? Torek gasped, collapsing to his knees as they reached the center of the chamber. His chest heaved, and his eyes darted around, searching for any sign of an exit. Rylan surveyed the room quickly, his mind racing. We have to disrupt the power, he muttered, almost to himself. He had no idea how this place worked, but he could feel the hum of energy, the rhythmic pulse of the structure itself. Without hesitation, he moved toward one of the terminals, its surface covered in alien symbols that twisted and shifted as he approached. His hands hovered over it, unsure, before he pressed his fingers against the surface. The panel lit up with a sickly green light, responding instantly to his touch. Torek's voice was barely a whisper. You don't know what that'll do. You could. We don't have time to be careful. Ryland's tone was harsh, his focus absolute. If we don't shut this thing down, it'll tear us apart. The screen flickered, and the symbols began to shift faster. Ryland's fingers moved across them instinctively, as if something deep within the structure guided him. The hum of energy around them grew louder, the pulse more frantic. He could feel the creature's presence pressing in on them, its malevolent energy seeping through the walls. Suddenly, the conduits lining the chamber flared to life, glowing with a blinding intensity. Torek shielded his eyes as the entire room was bathed in light. Ryland's heart raced as he pressed a final sequence on the terminal. There was a deafening crack, and the energy that coursed through the room suddenly surged out of control. The walls shuddered violently, and the creature's roar echoed through the structure once more, this time with unmistakable pain. Ryland staggered back from the terminal, his vision blurring from the strain. It's working, he gasped, watching as the room trembled, cracks forming along the conduits. But the creature wasn't done. It fought back, tendrils of dark energy lashing out from the walls, striking the conduits in an attempt to stop the collapse. Rylan and Torek were thrown to the ground as the chamber buckled around them, the energy flickering wildly. Get up, Rylan shouted, pulling Torek to his feet once again. They stumbled forward, heading for the far end of the room where a door, half obscured by rubble, led into a narrow passage. The exit was within sight. The structure's collapse was imminent now, the walls vibrating with the force of the creature's fury. The energy in the air became oppressive, suffocating, as if the structure itself was resisting its own destruction. The tendrils of darkness that had once slithered so freely through the walls now flailed in desperation, trying to regain control. Ryland's mind raced as they neared the passageway. Whatever force had built this place, whatever intelligence had guided it, was losing control. And the creature, ancient and malevolent, was unwilling to let them escape. As they pushed through the debris blocking the door, the passage beyond them stretched ahead, narrow and bathed in a flickering red light. It reminded Rylan of the earlier corridors, but something was different. This part of the structure felt colder, more sterile, an area that hadn't been touched by the organic growth they had seen earlier. We're close, Torek rasped, his voice hoarse. I can feel it. Whatever's keeping us here, it's losing power. Rylan nodded, though his thoughts were still clouded with uncertainty. The creature's malevolent presence lingered, but it felt weaker, more desperate. They had wounded it. But wounded creatures were often the most dangerous. The passage ahead opened into another chamber, this one smaller and more contained. At its center stood a large, pulsating orb, suspended by strange metallic arms. The air around it crackled with energy, the same green light that had flared to life earlier radiating from it. This must be the core, Rylin whispered, his eyes locking onto the orb. It's the source of everything. If we take this out, the whole place goes down. Torek stumbled forward, his body still trembling from the strain of their escape. But what happens if we destroy it? Will we even survive? Rylin didn't have an answer, but there was no other option. This place, this dark intelligence, had to be stopped. If they didn't end it here, it would never stop hunting them. Worse, it would continue to spread, 
corrupting and consuming everything in its path. With a deep breath, Ryland stepped toward the core. His mind was numb, his body running on pure instinct now. As he approached, the metallic arms twitched, the energy around the orb intensifying. It was as if the structure itself knew what he was about to do. Torek stood behind him, silent but resolute. His face was drawn, his body weak, but there was a grim determination in his eyes. They had come too far to turn back now. Rylan reached out, his hand trembling as it hovered over the orb. The energy radiating from it was intense, almost overwhelming, but he pushed forward, his fingers brushing against its surface. For a moment, nothing happened. The room remained still, the air thick with tension. Then, with a sudden, violent surge, the orb erupted with light. A wave of energy exploded outward, throwing Rylan and Torek to the ground. The walls around them cracked and buckled, the very foundation of the structure shaking as the core began to unravel. The creature's roar echoed through the chamber, a sound of pure, unadulterated rage. Rylan could feel it now, the dark presence growing weaker, its power draining away. But even in its defeat, it lashed out tendrils of energy snaking toward them, desperate to pull them into the void with it. Rylan struggled to his feet, his vision blurred from the blast. The orb was collapsing in on itself, the energy it had contained now spiraling out of control. He could feel the heat rising, the air growing thinner. Rylan, Torek shouted, his voice strained as he pulled himself up. We have to go, now. Rylan didn't need to be told twice. Together, they ran, the ground beneath them crumbling as the entire structure began to implode. The passageway behind them collapsed in a shower of debris, but they didn't look back. There was no time. As they sprinted through the corridor, the walls began to fall apart, revealing the vast expanse of the dead planet outside. The air was cold, the sky above them dark and swirling with clouds. The structure's collapse had triggered a massive storm, the winds howling as they tore across the desolate landscape. They stumbled out into the open, their bodies battered and bruised, but alive. Behind them, the alien structure crumbled into nothing, the energy that had once held it together dissipating into the air. The creature's presence was gone, its voice silenced forever. Rylan fell to his knees, his chest heaving as he struggled to catch his breath. Torek collapsed beside him, his face pale but relieved. It's over, Rylan whispered, his voice hoarse. It's finally over. But even as he said the words, a cold dread crept over him. Something wasn't right. He could still feel the faint hum of energy beneath the surface, the faint echo of a presence that refused to die. It wasn't over. Not yet. And whatever was coming next, they weren't ready for it. Rylan pushed himself to his feet, wiping the sweat from his brow as he scanned the dark horizon. Torek leaned against a shattered piece of debris, catching his breath, but Rylan's heart pounded with a different rhythm, a sense of urgency creeping back into his bones. I don't like this, he said, his voice low and tense. It's too quiet. The winds howled around them, but there was an unsettling stillness in the air, a weight that suggested they were not alone. Torek nodded, glancing nervously over his shoulder at the wreckage behind them. Do you think it's really gone? I mean, we saw it fall apart, but... Rylan cut him off, his gaze shifting toward the storm clouds swirling ominously above. I don't know, but we can't wait to find out. We need to move. The landscape surrounding them was bleak and desolate a wasteland of twisted metal and broken earth. Fragments of the structure littered the ground, glowing faintly in the dim light, remnants of the malevolent force they had just escaped. The air felt charged, alive with a sense of foreboding that sent chills down Ryland's spine. Which way? Torek asked, pushing off the debris and straightening up, determination flickering in his eyes. North, Ryland said, instinct guiding him. There's a canyon up ahead, it could provide some shelter and a vantage point. With a final glance at the ruins, they moved, the ground crunching under their feet. Every step felt like they were trespassing in a forgotten realm, the desolation echoing the horrors they had just endured. Ryland kept his senses sharp, 
alert for any sign of danger lurking in the shadows. As they approached the canyon, the air grew colder, a biting chill that wrapped around them like a shroud. Ryland could see the dark crevices of the canyon opening before them, a gaping maw that beckoned them in. He hesitated at the entrance, the shadows seeming to pulse, as if alive. Rylan, Torek's voice broke the silence, his tone threaded with unease. Do you feel that? It's like something is watching us. Rylan's instinct screamed in agreement, but he shook his head. It's just our minds playing tricks. We've been through a lot. He pressed forward, stepping into the canyon. The darkness swallowed them the walls rising steeply on either side, creating an oppressive sense of confinement. The deeper they ventured, the more palpable the silence became, wrapping around them like a fog. Ryland's heart raced, adrenaline sharpening his focus. As they rounded a bend, the canyon widened into a cavern, its ceiling lost in shadows. Bioluminescent fungi clung to the walls, casting eerie light on the cracked stone below. We can rest here for a moment, Ryland said his voice echoing slightly in the stillness. They stepped into the cavern, and he leaned against the wall, trying to catch his breath. Torek sat on a flat rock, his brow furrowed with worry. What if it comes after us? What if we didn't finish it off? Rylan looked at him, the weight of Torek's fear sinking into his chest. We will finish this, he replied, his voice steady. But we need to regroup and plan. We can't let it have any more power. Torek nodded, but Rylan could see the doubt lingering in his eyes. He knew they had both been irrevocably changed by their experiences, shadows of their former selves weighed down by the trauma they had faced. I'm going to scout ahead, Rylan said, trying to project confidence. Stay here and catch your breath. I'll be back. Torek opened his mouth to protest, but Rylan was already moving, slipping deeper into the cavern. The air grew colder, and he could feel a strange energy pulsing through the stone, almost as if the very walls were alive. He followed the winding passages, his senses on high alert. Each step took him further into darkness, the shadows thickening around him. Suddenly, he stumbled upon a larger chamber, its walls adorned with intricate carvings that depicted scenes of battles and horrors. The imagery was haunting, a civilization lost to time, consumed by its own creations. In the center of the chamber stood a massive pedestal, crowned with an orb that shimmered with a deep, unsettling light. Rylan felt drawn to it, his curiosity battling with the instinct to flee. The orb pulsated, thrumming with energy, its glow beckoning him closer. As he stepped forward, the air shifted, charged with a palpable tension. Rylan hesitated, the weight of his decisions pressing heavily on him. The orb seemed to respond to his presence, its light flickering as if recognizing him. A voice, deep and resonant, echoed in his mind. You are of the Chosen, yet the choice remains. Will you accept your destiny? Rylan recoiled, shaken. What are you? he demanded, scanning the chamber for any signs of the creature or another threat. A fragment of the consciousness that once ruled this realm, the voice replied, its tone soothing yet sinister. I have witnessed the rise and fall of empires. I offer power, but power has its price. Rylan clenched his fists, the temptation swirling around him. He could feel the orb's allure, promising strength beyond imagination. But at what cost? He had seen what such power could do, how it could corrupt and destroy. I don't want power, he said, his voice firm despite the doubts creeping into his mind. I want to end this. I want to save what's left of our world. The orb pulsed with energy, the voice shifting. Your desire is noble, but the path to salvation is fraught with shadows. Embrace the darkness, and you shall become its master. Ryland stepped back, fear igniting in his chest. He turned to flee, but the chamber began to tremble, the walls vibrating as if the orb were reacting to his rejection. He sprinted toward the exit, panic rising with each step. Behind him, the voice grew louder, reverberating through the chamber. You cannot escape your fate, Rylan. You are bound to this darkness as much as you are to the light. As he burst back into the corridor, he stumbled upon Torek, who was waiting anxiously. What happened? Torek asked, 
concern etched on his face. You took too long. Ryland gasped for breath, shaking his head as the echoes of the orb's voice haunted him. It was, it wanted me to accept it, he managed, the dread settling like a stone in his stomach. But I couldn't. Torek's expression shifted to one of determination. We have to leave. We have to warn the others about whatever that thing is. They turned to leave the cavern, but as they moved, a chilling wind swept through the canyon, sending shivers down Ryland's spine. The shadows deepened, and he felt the air grow heavy with malice. Suddenly, from the depths of the canyon, dark shapes began to emerge, coalescing into form. The creatures were not the same as the one they had fought before. These were different, more grotesque and twisted, with jagged limbs and glowing eyes that glinted with predatory hunger. Rylan and Torek exchanged panicked glances, the reality of their situation crashing down on them. They were not safe. Not yet. Run, Rylan shouted, and they sprinted back the way they had come, the echoes of their footsteps mingling with the growls of the approaching creatures. The ground shook beneath them, rocks tumbling from above as the canyon walls threatened to close in. As they ran, Rylan felt the weight of darkness chasing them, the creatures' breath hot on their backs. They darted around corners, desperate to find an exit, the flickering lights of the fungi light their path in brief flashes. The creatures gained ground, their guttural growls echoing ominously in the confined space. Rylan pushed himself harder, every muscle in his body screaming as he fought against the suffocating terror threatening to consume him. Here, Torek shouted pointing to a narrow opening in the rocks. They dove through it, tumbling into a smaller chamber on the other side, the rough stones scraping their skin. They huddled against the wall, gasping for breath as the sounds of the creatures echoed outside, the growls mixed with a rumble of collapsing rock. Ryland could feel the walls closing in, the darkness pressing against them, the very essence of their fear materializing into something tangible. What do we do? Torek's voice trembled, fear seeping through his bravado. Ryland's mind raced, trying to piece together a plan. We need to fight. If we don't stand our ground, we'll never escape this. Torek nodded, though uncertainty flickered in his eyes. How? We barely survived the last one. Ryland took a deep breath, forcing himself to stay calm. We've faced worse. We can't let them take us. They moved deeper into the chamber, the shadows shifting ominously around them. Ryland spotted a jagged rock, a makeshift weapon, and picked it up, feeling its weight in his hand. As the growls grew closer, he exchanged a determined look with Torek. We'll lure them in and fight back, together. Torek took a deep breath, stealing himself. Okay, together. The creatures burst into the chamber, eyes glowing with malice as they charged forward. Rylan raised the rock, adrenaline surging through him. They were not victims, they were warriors. And together, they would face whatever darkness came their way. The first creature lunged at them, but Rylan sidestepped, swinging the rock with all his might. It connected with a sickening thud, the creature staggering back with a howl. Torek followed suit, his movements fueled by fear and determination. They fought back against the onslaught, desperation driving them as they pushed against the tide of darkness. With every strike, they felt the weight of their choices, the shadows threatening to overwhelm them. But they refused to yield, refusing to let fear dictate their fate. The battle raged on, each moment stretching into eternity as they fought for their lives. And in that chaos, Rylan realized something profound. Every strike, every breath, was a choice. A choice to resist, to fight, to hold on to hope, even when all seemed lost. The last creature fell, its body crumpling to the ground, and Ryland stood panting in the dim light, adrenaline coursing through his veins. But the victory felt hollow. The darkness was still there, lurking just out of sight, waiting for another opportunity. We need to keep moving, Ryland said, his voice hoarse as he looked at Torek. This fight isn't over. They stepped back into the shadows, the weight of uncertainty hanging heavily between them. But they were not alone. They had each other, and that made all the difference.